Ball control is the ability to alter the natural path of the cue ball, allowing you to set up for the next shot. A variation of spin and stroke types makes it possible to place the cue ball anywhere on the table. This is achieved by striking the cue ball in different positions other than in the center. A series of key positions on the cue ball are used as guidelines for achieving the desired spin effect. Here we see these positions indicated by a series of circles. Each circle represents the impact point of the Q-tip. The stun shot, sometimes referred to as the stop shot, is used to eliminate any forward movement on the cue ball after it makes contact with an object ball. In this situation, the six ball sits directly in front of the side pocket. Since the shot is straight on, a stun shot is the perfect solution to avoid a scratch. The shot is performed by striking the cue ball just below center. This causes the cue ball to slide along the table instead of rolling naturally. Upon contact with the object ball, the cue ball's sliding motion stops, leaving the ball stationary. The important thing to remember is that the cue ball needs to be sliding upon impact. This means that it cannot contain any forward or backward spin when it contacts the object ball. How far you strike the cue ball below center depends on the distance between the cue ball and the object ball. The longer the distance, the lower you'll need to strike the cue ball in order to counteract the friction of the cloth. This will ensure that the cue ball will slide farther rather than resume its natural rolling motion. Returning back to our example, We've set ourselves up for an easy shot on the seven ball, which now sits straight out from the corner pocket. Although a stun shot would suffice, the next shot on the eight ball would be far easier if draw were to be used when shooting the seven ball. A slight draw brings the cue ball back just enough to line up for the eight ball in the same corner pocket, at the same time avoiding a potentially awkward transition from the eight ball to the nine ball. The draw shot is executed by striking the cue ball near its bottom edge. The cue ball actually spins backwards, even though it is sliding in a forward motion. Upon contact with the object ball, the spin changes the cue ball's direction, altering its natural path and bringing it back towards the player. The general rule is that hitting the cue ball lower generates more backspin. As with the stun shot, Shooting a distant target requires more spin in order to counter the friction caused by the cloth. Be wary of striking the cue ball too low. Since both the Q-tip and the cue ball are round, striking too low can cause the Q-tip to slip on the surface of the cue ball, causing a miscue. Returning back to the example, the cue ball is now placed nicely for the 8-ball. However, before pocketing the ball, this might be a good time to consider the next shot, which is the 9-ball sitting against the short rail. Ideally, we'd like to make this as easy as possible and avoid a potentially difficult cut shot on the 9-ball. The easy solution to this problem is to apply a small amount of follow to the cue ball, allowing it to roll forward after contacting the 8-ball. This will ensure a favorable position for the next shot. The follow shot is achieved by striking the cue ball above center. The applied spin causes the cue ball to reach its natural forward roll almost immediately. 
Upon contact with the object ball, the forward spin is maintained. The maximum quantity of follow can be achieved by striking the ball at roughly three quarters its height. Striking higher will not generate more spin and could result in a miscue. It is crucial to use a proper stroke when attempting any of these shots. Failure to follow through on the stroke will punch the cue ball, reducing the amount of spin. Keeping the cue stick level to the table is also vital to a proper follow through as it helps keep a clean contact between the cue ball and the cue tip. Elevating the cue stick to increase draw is a common error and should almost always be avoided. All three shot types are essential to the game of pocket billiards. As with everything, a clear understanding combined with lots of practice will help to make these shots easier. Within a short period of time, you'll find yourself using these new principles every time you approach the table.